Build a vine-covered pergola in your backyard to shade a stone patio or wood deck using wood beams and lattice set on precast. Classical style columns. The dappled sunlight created by the overhead latticework creates a cool, relaxing environment perfect for backyard entertaining like standing in the shade of a tree on a hot summer day. Tools required for bin 1 screwdriver cock gun combination square cordless drill extension cord hammer hole socket jigsaw level miter saw post hole digger putty knife rooter safety glasses spade speed square step ladder straight edge. Tape measure tool. Belt getting started on how to build a pergola here's a summer project designed to keep you cooler on even the hottest of days. The classical columns support an overhead wooden lattice that works like a big shade tree letting only a portion of the sun's radiance shine through. What looks like the toughest part of this pergola plans project is actually the easiest the graceful, solid-looking columns. They're not wood at all but a hollow core composite material with amazing structural strength and durability. We've designed the pergola plans so you simply slip these columns over treated four times for posts embedded in concrete. When screwed to the wooden posts, these columns provide a stable, solid base for the overhead lattice framework. These paintable precast columns are available by special order at home centers. They come in a wide variety of diameters and heights and architectural styles. Pressure-treated dimensional to X8S and to by 10S make up the majority of the upper framework. And the decorative end pieces are cut with a jigsaw from our pergola plans. The whole project can be built in a couple of weekends, with another weekend for staining and painting. We built our pergola over an existing stone patio that saved a lot of patio work. If you're planning to install a patio as part of your overall project, you'll need to allow extra time. Choosing the right location and pergola plans and designs. Because this DIY pergola project is made to stand independent of the house, you can either locate it right near your house as we did or let it stand alone in the garden. You can also consider using wood chips or gravel as a floor or even pour a concrete slab underneath by keeping it unattached about four in. From the eaves, you don't have to deal with moving existing gutters or matching eaves. You also don't have to mess with frost footings in colder climates. However, if you have clay soil, it's best to dig to frost depth if greater than 24 in, for your footings to prevent frost heave. Our existing patio was built over a sand and compacted gravel base, so we removed only the stones necessary to dig the 12 in. Diameter holes to secure the posts. You'll most likely have a different situation. Build a pergola over an existing patio instead of building a new one saves you a lot of time, money, and work. If you'll be adding a patio later, be sure to pour all the footings at the finished patio height as part of your pergola designs. Keep in mind any slope you'll include in the patio. Most patios slope about 1 8 in. Per foot to drain. Step to pergola designs details. Use this illustration when building the pergola. It provides some dimensions and shows how each part is labeled. To print out this illustration, go to additional information at the end of this story. Before you dig any holes, call your local utilities or 411 to mark any buried cable or gas lines. Once you're sure there are no buried utilities in the area, dig your holes with a handheld post hole digger or rent a power auger. You'll also need a shovel to widen the hole. Dig until it's at least 24 in. Deep. Step 3. Measure your soffits to determine the DIY pergola column centers. If pergola designs include building close to the house, first measure the projection of your eaves. Keep the center of the posts nearest the house at least 7 in. Farther from the house than this measurement to accurately position the column centers near but not too close to the house. Drive remote stakes an equal distance from the house, attaching a string to help mark and align the outer post locations. To keep the posts in alignment, stake your post locations using remote stakes with a string. With the stakes driven beyond the work area, you'll be able to undo the string while you dig and then reattach it later to check for alignment. To check for left to right placement parallel to the house, just measure the distance from one of the remote stakes and write this measurement on a notepad. 
To make sure the layout is square, adjust the diagonal measurements of the post holes so they're equal. Step 4. Set posts in concrete. As you dig your holes, put the soil in a wheelbarrow and find a place to relocate it away from your site. Save any gravel or sand to reinstall pavers. You may need to move a post slightly. We shifted one post near the house to create an entry along the steps. Reconnect your layout string to make sure the holes are aligned. Cut your forming tubes and insert them into the holes. Level the tops of the forming tubes until they're flush with the patio surface. If you mix the concrete on site, you'll need about 5 bags of concrete or sacred concrete mix per hole for a total of 30 bags. That's enough to have your home center or lumberyard deliver it to the site. If you call for a ready mix delivery, ask for one half cubic yard, add your 60 VIN posts and pour concrete around them. As you set your posts, reposition your string line about one minus three quarters in to allow for the post thickness and then align the posts with your string line as you pour in the concrete. Note, if you have a post that's one half in, out of whack, don't sweat it. You'll be able to align the tops of the columns later when you install the overhead beam. Once the posts are embedded in concrete, let the concrete harden for a minimum of two days. Step 5. Cut the pergola columns to length and fasten them to the posts. To make sure we cut the bottom only we didn't want to have to wait another two weeks for a new column, we flip the columns end for end, flip them over the posts, and mark the bottoms of each column for trimming and numbered them as well. Attach a story pole to the house to establish a reference point. Step 6. Mark the posts for cutting. We wanted the roof of the DIY pergola to align with the fascia of the house for a custom, fluid look. To keep the roof of the pergola even and level across the whole top side, you'll need to cut each post exactly. Attach a level to a straight to times 4 and mark the bottom of each post level with your height mark against the house. Measure down 10 minus 1 half in from the top of your fascia board for the cutoff height of your columns 95 inches. 4 hours. Remember, there's still 10 minus 1 quarter in. Additional height going onto the tops of the posts. Step 7. Cut posts with a jigsaw. Transfer your mark completely around the post using a combination square that's set from the bottom of the post. Cut the post with a 10 sheath per inch wood blade in your jigsaw. You'll need a fresh blade for every post you cut. We found the jigsaw a lot safer, quieter, and less dusty than a circular saw. This composite polymer is only about one half in. Thick but pretty hard, so expect to eat up a new blade on each column. Note to make cutting the columns easier. Lay them on sandbags or mulch bags to keep them from rolling or vibrating as you cut. Step 8. Install wood plugs in the pergola columns. Cut 5 minus 1 half in. Round treated wood plugs to fit the inside of your columns. Glue and screw together a pair for each column top, then glue the plugs flush into the top of each column. Secure the plugs to the columns with two in. Deck screws. Note, drive a screw into the top of each plug to use as a handle to position the plug. Step 9. Attach 1 by 4 shims to the posts. Screw 1 times 4 treated pine to the side of each 4 times 4. This will beef up the post so it meets the inside edge of the hollow column. Step 10. Attach the columns to the posts. Now slip each column over its post. Strap a level near the base of each column. The column begins to taper slightly after 32 inches. From the bottom and screw into the wood beneath. Predrill and countersink eight screw holes in the sides of the columns for six inches. From the bottom and for 30 in. From the bottom. Use three VIN. No. 12 exterior wood screws to anchor the columns to the wood posts. Plumb the column as you screw it to the post. You'll notice some play between the post and column. Opposing screws will tighten the entire assembly. Step 11. Set the beam over the pergola columns. Next, slip the molded base over the top of the column, and then slip the capital on as well. It's best not to fasten these in place until the project is nearly completed. Measure the length of the front 
and back to times 10 beams E, making them 3 inch.